Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. This tutorial series is for you if you're just beginning your journey towards learning web development. The only prerequisite is that you learn HTML first because CSS is applied to HTML. This course is also for you if you're looking for a resource to share with a friend that's just beginning their journey towards learning web development. Or you may be looking for a refresher course because you previously learned some CSS, but it's been a few semesters or even years since you worked with it. Or maybe you have another reason that I haven't even thought of. No matter, you're welcome and I hope I help you on your journey. Throughout the tutorial, I will mention references and tools, and I'll provide links to everything I mention in the description below. So let's get started learning CSS. What is CSS? CSS is an acronym that stands for Cascading Style Sheets. So CSS is a style sheet language that's used to describe the presentation of a document. It's most known for being used with HTML, although it can be applied to other media. Like you see here, I've got XML, SVG, MathML, XHTML, and other things listed here for on paper, in speech, other media, but we will be working with HTML. Now, when we think about the difference between HTML and CSS, consider HTML as the foundation and structure. So if you think about a new building or a house that is being built and you see that structure go up, that is the foundation. That's everything that holds it together. However, the CSS is the paint and the carpet and the wallpaper or anything, any decorations, anything that makes it look good. So the structure holds it all together. It's the foundation. The CSS is really what makes the appearance, that actual presentation of the building. Or in our case, we're working with documents. Okay, now before we start writing CSS, let's get the tools we need. And first of all, I will be using the Chrome browser in this course. So you can download Chrome if you don't have it from google.com slash Chrome, and it should be available for every platform and it will probably identify what platform you have here as well. After that, we're going to use an integrated development environment, really a code editor. And what we will use is Visual Studio Code. So that is at code.visualstudio.com. It should also recognize what platform you're on already, but if it doesn't, you can click Other Platforms and you can find it for all the different platforms that we're probably using. Okay, go ahead and download the version you need. And if you need Chrome, download that as well. Install the software and then come back to the video. Okay, at this point, I'm going to assume you've got everything downloaded and installed. And now I've got Visual Studio Code open right here. You may have a welcome screen. I closed that out already. But what you need to do, if you haven't already, is create a folder on your computer for your project. For this lesson, you'll probably want to create a new folder for each lesson, or at least build upon the lesson in the same folder. Either way, you need a folder. And the first thing we want to do is create an index.html file, because once again, we will apply our CSS to HTML. Now, if you're not familiar with Emmet shortcuts, we can take an Emmet shortcut here to quickly create an HTML document. Just type the exclamation mark and press enter. And now this gives us a very basic HTML document. And of course, it has a title just of document. It has a couple of meta tags up here you might not have seen, but they're handy to go ahead and leave in the page for now. What we want to do is just put some content. So let's put a paragraph here and let's say, I'm learning CSS with an exclamation mark and save. And really that's all we need in our HTML document right now. Now there are three different ways to apply CSS to our document. There is an external style sheet, we could have an internal style sheet, or we could apply CSS in line with an element. Let's look at each option. And I'll start out with the external style sheet. So I want to create a link element here, and I'll press tab, and Visual Studio Code helps us out. It already gives us the rel attribute that says it's a style sheet, and we need to link to a style sheet, but we haven't created one yet. So over here in the file tree, let's create a new directory and name it CSS. Now inside the CSS directory, let's go ahead and create a new file named style.css. 
And now we have our style sheet file. And inside of this, let's put a P for our paragraph element, a curly brace. Now one return and we'll go ahead and put a style here. This will be a rule actually, or a declaration if you will. And let's just change the color of our paragraph and let's make it purple and end with a semicolon and save. This is a very, very simple style sheet right now. And now back in our HTML, we can go ahead and link to that style sheet by putting in the CSS directory and you can see Visual Studio Code wants to help us out. So we'll click on that and then it knows the style.css is in there. So we can click on that and now that should link. You may see some older code that has a type attribute here, but Mozilla now points out that this is no longer required and is actually kind of frowned upon. So we do not want to include that, but you may see older code with it. It doesn't break the code if it's there. It's just not the modern way of doing that. So there is our link to the style sheet. And now one thing we haven't done yet is add the live server extension. So if you don't have that, click on the extension icon over here on the left and then in the search extensions type live server. And when those options come up, we should see one from Ritwick Day. And you want to select that. And then you want to go ahead and install. And I already have it installed, so I don't need to do that. But this will let us not only launch our HTML and CSS, but anytime we make a change and save, it will immediately reload, just as if it's on a web server. You don't want to load these files into your browser directly from your hard drive. You want to really kind of have a development environment that simulates a web server. And that's what Live Server does for you. So go ahead and install that. Once you have that installed, and I'll click on the Explore icon over here to look at our files again, but now you'll have some options in Visual Studio Code. You could click Go Live down here at the bottom right, and it says, click to run live server when we mouse over, or you can right click just in the file and you could choose open with live server. And I'll go ahead and do that now. And there we have our very, very basic web page, but we can see it is super small. I don't know if you can even see that. I would have to zoom in and enlarge that, but it says I'm learning CSS. So we could add another style in our style sheet. And let's just go ahead and put it above the color style and I will put font-size, and I'm going to change this to 64 pixels. It should be pretty big now. So I'll save, resize Visual Studio Code, much better. So we've got a purple I'm learning CSS with large font. Now let's go back to the HTML file, and I'm going to expand Visual Studio Code again so we have a little more room. Now in this head section, directly underneath our link element, I'm going to type style and press tab. And there is such a thing as a style element. Now, inside of the style element here, between the opening and closing tags, that is, we can write CSS. So I'm also going to style a paragraph. And here, I'm going to put the color as lime green. Now, I'll save this. And let's go back and look at our page and see what we've got. Now we have, I'm learning CSS and it is lime green. Notice it's still large font though. So the other style sheet, I'll press control B to hide the file tree for a second so we can see this better. The other style sheet is still being applied, but we have overwritten the purple rule for the color with green. Now, does one take precedent over the other? Does the internal style sheet, which is what we just built right here with the style elements, that's the internal, does it take precedence over the external? Not really, just it's interpreted as another style sheet, either way. Now normally I use external style sheets, but there is no difference as far as the browser is concerned. What is the difference is the cascade or the order in which they're read. So it read this style sheet first, and then it read this one last. So the last color that it saw for our paragraph was lime green. We can further highlight that by highlighting our link element and cutting it with control X and then pasting it with control V underneath our internal style sheet. And so now our external style sheet is read last and I will save 
And now we've got a purple I'm learning CSS again. And the final way to apply CSS inside an HTML document is with inline CSS. This is really not the way to do it though. You really want to avoid inline CSS if you can. I just want to demonstrate what it is because you can use style as an attribute. And now we don't need a selector, which is what the P is up here. This is selecting the paragraph. We already know it's being applied to a paragraph. So here I'll just say color, and I'm going to say blue. I really don't need a semicolon because I don't have any other declaration here. If I had more than one, I'd have a semicolon in between. Now if I save this, notice it's now blue over here. This does take precedent over either type of style sheet, internal or external, because it's applied directly to the element itself. But what we want is a separation of concerns. So the best way, the way that is commonly used, is the external style sheet. It keeps your CSS code completely separate from your HTML. Okay, let's remove our inline styling from the paragraph. And let's also remove the style element because we will be focusing on using external style sheets for the rest of the course. So we can save that. And let's go ahead and scroll up to the top of the HTML document. And now let's move over to the external style sheet. And then in the browser, notice of course this is already back to purple now, let's go to another MDN page, that's the Mozilla Developer Network, and we get an anatomy of a CSS rule set. So let's break this down and we can look at our own example to the left as well. But we have our selector, that means we're selecting the paragraph or paragraphs if we had more than one. Now we have a property and a property value. So the property being the color, the value being red, and then the declaration is the property and the property value together. So we have the same thing over here, just color and purple, and the full declaration is both. Now it says the whole structure is called a rule set, but also notice it says the term rule set is often referred to just as rule. So you could consider this a CSS rule, if you will. Okay, let's go back to our HTML document in the browser. And something I need to note here about CSS is it's using the American spelling of color. There could be other English words that are different, but notice how Visual Studio Code knows there's already a problem here. And if I save this, purple is not applied to our document. It's back to the default black text. So we need to spell things with American English, I guess is the best way to put it, our dialect without the U in color, and there could be some other words as well. But notice, we didn't get an error or anything. If we do put in color the wrong way, it's just ignored, and that is something about CSS. And sometimes it's hard to detect when you've done something wrong because you're not getting an error thrown like programming languages. The rule or the declaration, I should say, not the entire rule, but this declaration is just being ignored because we didn't spell color in the way CSS expects. So if I change that back, once again, we have purple text. Now, one way we can detect problems in our CSS is to validate our CSS files. So let's pull up a page that will do that, and we go to CSS Validation Service from W3C, that's the World Wide Web Consortium, and we want to choose File by Upload, where we can select the CSS, style.css, from our folder, and you need to choose File, and then browse to the folder where your CSS is, which should be in the folder you created, and then if you created a CSS folder, it would be in there. Here's my style.css, so I'll select it, and choose Open, and now we'll just click the Check button, and this page will show us if there are any errors, but if there's not, you should get this congratulations, no error found message, just like I did. So I will put a link to this CSS validator in the description of the video or with the resources, and then in the next video, we're going to learn all about CSS selectors. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.